It's Dakota with Tarmi, and we are going to build a dynamic link restatement financial model in Power BI. This template and all the others are available in the link below, and this is going to be a multi-part video series. So tune in, hit like, hit subscribe. Let's learn how to build this thing. First part that we're going to be doing in this video is walking through how to build an income statement that links to the balance sheet and the cash flow statement for a full dynamic three statement financial model. Later on, we're going to be talking about the balance sheet and modeling things like depreciation and amortization, things like debt payments. Uh, ultimately, we're going to end with the cash flow statement. And then in later content, I'm going to talk about how you can get your customers and your clients in Power BI to use parameters to adjust the modeling sensitivities that you have. We'll do a little scenario analysis and we will use the new Power BI feature that came in the October update. Um, that's for calculation groups. So I'll be linking to those videos as I make them. And of course, this is meant for people who want to build financial models that are forward looking for valuation purposes, for forecasting purposes for their business. And I think it's perfect for people that are already pretty good at doing this in Excel, as well as for people that are totally new to it. So why do I think you should learn this skill in Power BI in particular? Well, the three statement financial modeling is totally integral for, for anyone that wants to do a company or a project level analysis. Uh, Power BI makes it way more efficient because it's quick, it's on the web. Um, the modeling side of it is a little more advanced than I think you can do in Excel, and it's easier to keep track of, in my opinion. I know I uh, might be in the minority there. Any business that can't forecast their performance um, is not going to stay in business very long. So this is why we have financial modeling and the people that do it, analysts like ourselves. And then in Power BI, you are giving your customers and clients a better interactive model. You're giving them more control. It's more modern than a standard spreadsheet that's getting sent around on email, as I'm sure we're all familiar with. And uh, my personal favorite, uh, I'll reduce my size here. Um, this is a skill that you need to add to your toolbox if you are a very good Excel user, because you're going to blow the minds of all of your Excel obsessed colleagues. And um, let's jump right in and build the income statement. All we need to get started is a viewpoint of a current structure of an income statement for your company. In our case, this is Narnia Ski Company. We are highly profitable. We sell a lot of lift tickets and a lot of Apres Ski beers. The design here is very simple. You can see there's not a lot of accounts. I'm doing that for educational purposes here. You could pull this from your core accounting system at your company or from an Excel spreadsheet like we're doing here. Let's quickly just re-familiarize ourselves with what an income statement is. Typically at the, you're reporting it for a period ended. So in this case, we're just gonna call it 2023 year ended. And you start with revenue or your sales. Below that, you'll immediately back out your cost of goods sold or COGS. These are like your variable costs that, that trend with revenue. That'll give you your gross profit and then back out any operating expenses. These are things like utilities, property taxes, salaries, marketing and overhead, that kind of stuff. Once you back that out, you're at your EBITDA. And the reason we use EBITDA as a measure is it allows us to easily compare businesses that may have differences in things like capital structure or operating costs. It allows us to uh, make valuation comparisons much easier. It's sort of a normalization subtotal that we use in the income statement. We are going to model depreciation in Power BI, and this will be a very useful set of skills to learn. We'll do that in the balance sheet section. Of course, once we back out depreciation, our little acronym is getting shorter here. Now we're at EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. Interest is the interest payment on your debt for that period of your income statement. We'll leave these both zero until we build it into our Power BI model. Then you're at EBT, earnings before taxes. The tax rate, we'll just pick a rate. Yours is going to be different. I'll just use 30% here. And then finally, that arrives us at our net income or, or profit. So all we need to do is bring a concept of this structure over into Power BI, and then we're going to be entirely in Power BI. So let's do that now. So here I am in a blank Power BI file with no data tables, and I'm going to 
paste in the simplified income statement that we had from the previous section here. I'm going to click this undo headers because I do not want the first row to be my headers. We're going to call this account and the second column we'll call 2023. And this will be the name of our table income statement. Let's go into Power Query Editor and make a few changes. The first change I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a date column. Right now, we do not have a column that actually has anything of the date type format. So in order to do that, I'll hit transform here, unpivot columns, rename this to date, change the type to normal date. We don't need date time. Of course, everything's going to be 2023 because that's the only data we brought in and everything we're doing forward is modeling. And the date type here of number looks good. And we can now bring this into Power BI. Okay, so I've got account, date, and value. If I put it in a matrix visual and I put the date hierarchy on columns, it's going to look exactly like what we saw in Excel. But of course, our sort number is not making sense. Let us first add a date table. And the date table will be sort of the center of our model, right? So we're going to have a balance sheet projection going forward, income statement projection going forward. And we're going to be using dates from the date table as the center place of our model. So we'll call it date and we'll use the DAX calendar function. And the first date we will do is 2023, January 1st. And we'll run it out to 2028, 1231. And let's take a quick peek on how that looks. And it's a row for every day between that start date and that end date that I told it to create. So that date table is going to be the center of our data model. So let's go over into the relationships view and drag that relationship between date and income statement. And we will do the same thing when we add the balance sheet table and head back over into our report. We're actually going to build our visuals all using measures as the rows, and we will use a matrix visual for pretty much everything we're doing. So let's start by creating a new measure. And we will need a measure for essentially every line and every subtotal in our income statement. And it's a little bit of work up front, but once you have it built, and reuse the DAX code over and over and over, it goes really quickly. So for revenue, we are going to do a calculate statement and we want the sum of our value from that initial data that we brought in. And the account name is just going to be revenue. So if we close that up, press enter, I'm going to do a simple copy paste here. I'm going to do the exact same DAX syntax for our cost of goods sold. On a blank part of the canvas, bring both of those measures in, make it a matrix visual, bring in date on the columns, and go over here into the formatting pane, down on values, options, switch rows, switch values to rows. And that's going to put your measures here in the same format that we had ultimately just bringing in that that raw data and it's very simple to reorder and create a custom view of a financial statement simply by dragging those measures up and down because we have individual measures for each part of our income statement now the next measure we're going to make is actually a subtotal of the income statement right gross profit is your revenue minus your cost of goods sold so to make that it's as simple as revenue minus cost of goods sold. Drag that in. And I got my signage wrong. So we are cash flow signage, so cost is negative signage. So it's simply revenue plus cost of goods sold. And there's your 900 like we have. I'm just going to fast forward this section because it's all the same DAX. And I'm going to build out the rest of the income statement.
Okay, so what we have here is a matrix visual that is properly sorted by the accounts that we want to see in our income statement, and then the values for 2023 match the data that we brought in. What we do not have is any forecast assumptions for how we want to grow going forward. So typically in pro forma modeling, you will have some sort of revenue growth assumption, a hogs percentage of revenue. So your costs will increase as your revenues increase. Same thing for operating expenses. And then we'll need to make some sort of assumption on the tax rate going forward. So this will all be unique to your business. And the fastest way to bring it in, there are multiple ways, is just have uh, an assumptions register like you would in Excel. So in this case, I'll bring in the 5% growth assumption, 20% cost of goods sold, percentage of revenue, that kind of thing. I've brought it into Power BI the exact same way that we brought in the initial income statement. I'll walk you through those steps here. So brought it in straight from Excel. We've got our percentages and the unpivot technique in order to arrive at a date column so that we, of course, can relate to our date table, which is the center of our model. So very simple stuff there. And let's do revenue first, which had that 5% growth factor. So I'll show you exactly how to do that in DAX. Open up the revenue measure. First thing we're going to do just to keep our code clean is we will establish a variable. We'll call this the starting point. And it's the starting point because this is the, the value that came from 2023 actuals in our income statement, right? So equals there. Let's make one more variable. We'll call it the growth factor. And that's going to need to pull data from the assumptions table because that has that 5% growth factor. So we will do one plus calculate some of the value from the assumptions table, not the income statement table, where the assumption is the revenue growth. And this is a growth factor through the years, so we need it to compound. And in order to do that, let's bring in the little caret symbol. And we'll use a few date functions here. We'll do year of first date from our date table. That's going to return the year of whatever column in the in that matrix visual going forward. So that's exactly what we want. And from that, we're going to subtract 2023, which is that starting year of our model. So on the return statement, we just simply want the starting point multiplied by our growth factor. And of course, you can use all these same concepts for inflation, you know, an inflation factor or a deflation factor, all that stuff. There's one important component here that, that we need to touch on, and that is using the all DAX function. And what the all DAX function is, is it's very useful in modeling like this because it removes the filter context for that particular table. We need to use that in this situation because right now, we only have a revenue value for 2023. If I put the all with the date table uh, in it, what that does is it will hold the concept of that value regardless of the year going forward. And that's exactly what we want because we have a growth factor that's compounding through time. We want it to be that revenue value times the growth factor. So that's why I'm using the all. We press enter here we have the proper compounding growth at 5% a year here in our income statement. So let's continue. Next line, cost of goods sold. Let's do a really similar technique here. And let's call a variable the COGS percentage, right? Because in our, oh, I guess I can't use the percentage symbol. COGS percentage, because that is a, it's going to be a percentage of our forecasted revenue going forward. And the COGS percentage, of course, is simply calculate some of the value from the assumptions table where the assumption is equal to hogs percentage of revenue close that return our revenue times cogs percentage return. and i had adjusted it to 20 percent of revenue so now we have our cost of goods sold modeled at 20 percent of revenue going forward 
I'll just very quickly fast forward through the next steps because it's essentially the same syntax. Now we've got our revenue and our costs properly forecasted forward using our assumptions from our assumptions table up here. I'm going to teach you a couple cool tricks right now of how to keep your measures organized in your file. If you go over to the model view, select all of these measures we made for our income statement. You could have a lot more depending on how complex your financial statement is. And right here in the display folder, call it income statement measures, press enter. And now they're all organized in a nice little folder structure. Okay, I'll teach you one more tip and this will be about addressing the formatting issues. You know, a lot of people like to knock on Power BI because it's not as flexible as Excel for creating very custom looking financial statements. I'll teach you a trick here that should help you out a little bit. So open any Microsoft Office product. This could be Word, this could be Excel. Go to the symbols box. And if you go to character code 2004, that's what's called a three perm space. So it creates an indentation. And what I'll do here is I'll simply copy that on my clipboard, go back into my Power BI. And on one of my measures here, for example, cost of goods sold, I will paste the three perm space twice, press enter. Now I have a nice indentation on my line here. I'll do the same thing with operating expenses. And we can take the formatting a ton further because we've built the income statement using measures instead of columns. Every single one of these lines can have a custom background, a custom font. We'll do some of that at the very end, not right now. But that's a very quick way to get the indentation that you see in financial statements. If I just go in here and I add a few spaces on a line and press enter, notice nothing happens, right? You need to bring in that symbol. So I like to use that, that uh, three perm space. Final little trick here, instead of going into every one of your measures and formatting them either currency or anything else, you can go into the model view here, highlight all of them, format them into currency with a thousand separator, zero decimal places, and every one of them will format just like that instead of going one at a time. Okay, so what's missing? What's missing is the modeled depreciation, depletion, and amortization. We need the balance sheet modeled in order to bring that into our income statement. That's what creates the three model dynamic link or three statement dynamic model all linked together. We also don't have a forecast on our interest. Of course, we don't know what interest we're paying if we don't have a forecast for our debt balance going forward. So balance sheet video above, also linked below, and we will continue to build this out. But I did say before the end of this income statement video, we would do a little bit of formatting. And the first thing we wanna do is the column subtotals here are not useful um, due to the, the DAX. So just eliminate those. And we also don't need any real subtotals because we're doing our own custom subtotals. The formatting bit, if you go to the formatting area here and go down into specific column, you will notice that you can apply formatting to your heart's content on every single one of the lines we have in our income statement. I'll grab net income. Let's say we wanted to make the background black, text white, apply to total, apply to header. So you can, you can do that for every one of these lines and really make it custom. Okay, so this was part one and we're immediately moving into the balance sheet. So make sure to click next on that video and let's continue to build the three statement dynamic model.